Welcome back friends. In this video tutorial, we'll be talking about the hot start PCR. We've been talking about the different types of PCR. Now hot start PCR is one type of modification of a normal PCR process to minimize uh, the production of unwanted DNA products. Because the major disadvantage of a polymerase chain reaction is the production of unwanted DNA amplifications. And we don't want to do that. There are several regions uh, or, or different types of modifications out there to minimize that. One of them is nested PCR, one of them is touchdown PCR. Now in this video we will be talking about the hot start PCR which is also provided to increase the specificity of the polymerase chain reaction. So let's begin with hot start PCR. The idea of hot start PCR is a modified version to avoid the non-specific amplification. In the second step, it adds the primer and the tag polymerase. And what we want to do in this case is to prevent the tag polymerase to produce unwanted DNA. And secondly, we also prevent all those primers to, prop to bind to unwanted or unnecessary regions of the target DNA. So there are two different stages of this whole process of hot start PCR to work. We don't allow the TAC polymerase to amplify whatever sequence it can. We don't want that. We block the TAC polymerase to do that. And we also block the primers to properly anneal to any place. Because you know there is a tendency for the primers to adhere to themselves. Because sometimes the primer designing, if, if the primer designing is not so good, it might end up with some regions of the complementarity in bases that will allow the primer to adhere to themselves formation of primer dimer take place which is unwanted as well as the primer can bind with some unspecific region of the DNA which will end up with a segment of the DNA amplified which we don't want. So to prevent that there are the two different process. The first process we want to talk about is the modification of the polymerase. What we do normally we add some sort of antibodies that will coat and bind to all those stack polymerase in the normal room temperature it is inactive then in room temperature antibody will properly function it will mask uh, the activity of the tag polymerase so the tag polymerase cannot initiate the process of polymerase chain reaction but as we start increasing the temperature at the very first step of the PCR reaction the temperature becomes 95 degrees Celsius that is what we call it as a hot start PCR because we start the pre PCR at the higher temperatures from the beginning that is the idea of hot start okay because the PCR process will only start if we add the temperature over 95 degrees Celsius now that will inactivate all those antibody antibody will be degraded so the TAC polymerase is now free and it will elongate the primers properly and then it can make the amplified DNA fragment. That is the idea of this stack polymerase modification. Now we can use the modification using different antibodies as well as we can use different enzymes to prevent that process to occur. The second part is the modification to the primers. Now let's look at that. Let's look at this idea of when we do the PCR without hot start and the PCR reaction with hot start method. So if you look at the without the hot start method which is a normal or common mode of PCR reaction let's begin with the primers and the polymerase and what happens actually this polymerase can sometime extend the primers because the primers can self anneal with themselves. Let's say in these two primers these black regions are the regions of complementarity found between two adjacent primers and they can pair with this complementarity and then polymerase enzyme can extend the 3 prime portion of the primers and that can amplify a wrong product that we don't want at all. So we want to get rid of this type of unwanted product during a PCR reaction. To prevent that we go with the hot start method. In the hot start method we have the primers, we have the polymerase and we have the binding proteins. Now these are the unique proteins that we provide from outside external as an extra modified version for this method. These binding proteins are unique 
and these binding proteins will keep on adhere to the primer until and unless they will reach a specific temperature for annealing. In normal temperatures, these proteins will bind and surround all those single stranded primer. It will not allow the primer to adhere to themselves. It will not allow the primer to attach to the target DNA or anything. Now as we increase the temperature, that will slowly degrade all the primers, slowly destroy all those, all those binding proteins. As the binding proteins are destroyed, they are no longer functional, then those primer can bind to the target region, then can bind to the flanking region, and then the process of target amplification can take place. So that is the two different way that we can prevent the production of these unwanted DNA fragments. And in both this case, we do this by preventing primer to attach uh, to themselves and primer to attach to the flanking region of the target DNA. And that is by using antibody as well as using some sort of other kind of binding proteins that could be some enzyme proteins as well. So in both this case, we need to activation of this whole process of PCR requires temperature. So we need to use higher temperature to start this PCR reaction in the first place. That's why it is known as hot start PCR. And it definitely increases the specificity of the PCR and minimize the unwanted DNA products. So that's all about hot start PCR. If you like this video, please hit the like button, share this video with your friends and subscribe to my channel to get more videos like that. Thank you.